Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Kid Good at Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Now, many uh, big parks, uh, especially ones that use a lot of custom objects, uh, uh, have these, uh, usually have a weird shape, uh, one that's not square. Um, it's usually achieved by putting these uh, uh, black tile objects around the park. Uh, you can see it clearly if I uh, make the scenery uh, see through. You can see uh, there's actually lots of objects uh, placed here. You can also see it when I uh, remove several of them. So yeah, this method relies on a lot, lot of these objects. Um, there's a 7x7 seven seven version, 1x1, uh, 3x3, one 5x5. One, three three, five five. Uh, so yeah, you can imagine that uh, if you place a lot of these, uh, this really adds up to the amount of objects that are in your park. Because every tile you place counts uh, as an object. So yeah, if you have a lot of, uh, if you have a big area to cover, then uh, that means there's also a lot of extra objects in your park. And the amount of objects that you can place in your park is not uh, unlimited. It is still qu a quite high number, but if you're building very detailed, uh, like many people do who are using custom scenery, then this is really a, a number of objects that you don't want to uh, to use. Uh, recently, uh, a method was uh, discovered that uh, works around this. And in this uh, video, I will show you uh, how to do it. Now, the first thing uh, we will do is uh, I'll make a screenshot of this uh, void, well, of this park, uh, because I want to know the color value of the void over here, the black void. So, I'm just pressing print screen uh, now, and then we'll go to uh, my favorite uh, image editing software, uh, paint.net, and there we'll look up the value of the, well, the color value of the void. All right, I've opened up uh, paint.net. Uh, well, now pasting the screenshot that I just made. Uh, here you can see it. Um, you'll have to look, you'll have to use this uh, color uh, window. If it's not visible for you, uh, you can select it here in the top right. Um, what we'll need here is the color picker. And then we'll just select the void. Um, it's selected here now and if we go to more then here you can see the RGB value of the of the void so uh, what this means is that uh, this color is uh, 23 red mixed with 35 green and 35 blue now this uh, value you should uh, write down uh, if you want to uh, follow this method all right. Uh, now, to uh, to actually uh, use this method, we'll need to make a custom uh, palette. I believe in my second uh, Git Good tutorial, uh, I showed you how to make a custom palette. Uh, so yeah, if this uh, tutorial is a bit too fast for you to uh, to follow, I recommend you watch that uh, other tutorial first, so you know how to make a custom palette. And then this one should also be a little bit more easy to follow. Anyway, now that we have this color value, we can use it uh, in a new custom palette. So, um, in the folder that is supplied in the, with the palette maker, there's a, there's a default palette with the cyan water. And I'll simply make a, color, a copy of that, which we will use to make our black tile palette. All right, here's, uh, here's my uh, palette maker uh, folder. Uh, it's a bit of a mess because there's many uh, palettes that I made here. Um, here we have the standard file, uh, water cyan. It's the default palette for, uh, well, for the normal uh, color of water that uh, you see in the game with the standard colors. Uh, so I will make a copy of this and I'll paste it here. I will name it uh, DK black black till black tile. Now, when you make a object name, you should always make sure that it's eight characters long, and it should be something unique. Uh, for example, don't 
just give it two characters. Uh, always use the full eight characters and try to make something that no one else will use. I always start my files with uh, DK from Dirklink and then uh, I add an abbreviation of the item name. Uh, I suggest you use uh, a prefix of your own that no one else uh, is likely to use just to prevent any conflicts between items, uh, between objects. Because, uh, for example, if someone has an object in their park uh, with the same with uh, the same name uh, as one of your palettes, then uh, yeah, if they open your park, uh, the park will look really weird. So yeah, you should really try to prevent that. Anyway, um, I will now open this uh, this copy of the normal water that we just made again with Paint.net and. Now I will just zoom in. Um, so yeah, here you can see the default uh, game palette. Now, um, what I want is uh, to put the black tiles on this uh, purple color. So yeah, with this method, sadly we have to sacrifice uh, one uh, game color. The reason I choose purple is uh, actually twofold. Um, First of all, purple is barely used in any of the objects uh, in the game, so it won't affect uh, many existing objects. And the other reason is that there's actually a land tile that we can use to uh, to paint the black tile on the land. So yeah, that's really, really convenient. Now, um, I actually kind of like this purple color in the game, so I don't really want to sacrifice it. So what I'm going to do first is copy these purple pixels and the color I'm going to sacrifice is this uh, well there's also a light purple and a dark purple in the game I'm not really sure if those are the color the, the color names but uh, I will simply uh, paste this uh, purple color over the other part so there we go there's these four pixels that I'll paste over this part. All right. So now we don't sacrifice the purple. Uh, we actually sacrifice a different color. All right. Now what we need to do is uh, now we'll want to paint our uh, black tile over the original purple. Now we'll need to use this color tab and. Uh, we'll need to use the black tile color, so it's the number we wrote down earlier, so it was 23 red, 35 green, 35 blue, let's see if we can color it, uh, we'll probably have to deselect this, alright. So if you need to deselect an area, just use the rectangle select tool, right, click the right button and uh, the selected area is gone. And we go back to the pencil, um, we still have the correct color, and we simply paint this purple area in the black tile color. And then uh, our, our palette bitmap is done, so we save it as a 24-bit bitmap. And then we go back to the palette folder. Um, now we have to modify the, the batch file that's in there. So I'll just edit it a bit. I actually already uh, prepared this uh, file for the black tile uh, bitmap. But yeah, basically you just have to replace all the names with the name of your uh, bitmap. For example, here DK black till dot BMP, here DK black till DK black till dot that, and here he'll want a little description. So I called it uh, black tile palette. And then we run the batch file, and when we do that, we'll find uh, that file, dkblacktile.dat, and then we cut it, or copy it, and we paste it in our object folder. Alright, here it is. Now when we open the game, the palette should show up in our objects. Alright, I just opened uh, a blank map 
via my NCSO bench of 2019. Uh, let me lower a piece of the land here. Now, um, this is still the standard palette. You can see this, uh, these purple tiles here. Okay, now I've colored this land uh, purple. Now let's see what happens when we change the palette to the one we just created. You can find it here under the water when the custom is uh, selected. Here we have, see the black tile palette. Now, when we close the object editor, editor the palette is not immediately applied yet. Uh, we have to open it again. And there we go. Now this uh, this area of the land is completely black. And here, now under the landscape, we have this uh, black tile uh, that we can use. So let's go to uh, paint mode. And now we can simply drag this all over the land. We could add more <laughs> void here if we wanted. So yeah, the upside of this method is that uh, these tiles, they don't use open uh, object slot uh, because we simply paint the landscape. Um, another trick we can do with this, so if we have colorable walls, we can use the black color and then we can also make uh, black tile walls if we want. If you want to uh, block out an area or if you only want something to be uh, visible from uh, one angle. So yeah, you can make these uh, void black objects if you want. Now, several objects are affected by this, uh, most notably uh, some of these uh, gardens. Uh, they used to be purple and now they uh, don't look so well. So yeah, probably uh, you shouldn't use these uh, gardens anymore if you use this uh, palette. But other than that, uh, I believe uh, relatively uh, few objects are uh, are affected. Because only very few uh, objects use that uh, blue color. Now, uh, I moved the purple to a different part of the palette. Uh, it's a little bit darker than usual. So yeah, here we now have a color purple, and there's also a lighter purple. I believe this is uh, kind of like the original one. So yeah, we lost one purple, but we got two in return. Of course, the colors that were, uh, are usually here, they're uh, now no longer uh, there. So we have dark purple, light purple, and bright purple is now black. Alright, um, I will uh, share this uh, this black tile uh, palette with you. Uh, I will link it in the video description. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a palette with different colors, but also with black tile, uh, you will have to make your own. Now, I want to thank uh, several people, uh, especially Anda23, Mekit and uh, Shen Kitchen for uh, helping to uh, develop this uh, palette. Um, yeah, their uh, research is uh, great for uh, discovering these kind of things. Anyway, um, I hope this uh, will be useful for you, and uh, I'll see you again in the next episode. See you later.